Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a house plant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. I'm here in Bali at Tria Garden, where I'm doing a tour in Bali on the house plant culture, the landscaping, and nursery tours. And I happen to come across this Talanzia nursery, this air plant nursery here, and it brings me so much joy. And I managed to speak with the owner here a lot about the plant care and the history about this place. So I'm going to share with you that on this impromptu tour. Uh, yeah, this video did not was not in the schedule at all, but I decided to do it anyways. And just as a disclaimer, I don't know a lot of the species here. So the owner here did share that there are over a thousand species of Tillandsias, which is something that I made a mistake about before because I thought that there's only a handful of them and the rest of them are hybridized. I heard that somewhere, I can't remember where I heard that from, but there are quite a lot of species of them, but they do hybridize very readily. And a lot of them here are hybridized. And a lot of species here and they come from all over the world but mostly from south america so the front of the store is actually a garden supply store and if you look at their instagram or their uh, website it's mostly going to be garden supply stuff but they do sell talansias and facebook plant groups feel free to dm them if you want to buy some of these plants from them um, so let's get started here look at this zero graphica here this is what their flowers look like it's just amazing and he shared so many uh, mounting tips with me. And I think, let me share that with you real quick before I forget. So basically he said that to mount them initially, you can use glue or you can tie them onto something like this uh, pole here, a wooden pole. And then over time, it will root into it. As you can see here, it will grip into it. So this is how you kind of mount them. And they said, just don't use any hot glue. And also you can tie them with uh, strings or you can tie them with um, metal wires like this and speaking of metal wires sorry before we begin our tour i'm going to be shamelessly advertising this place so we had a conversation about these beautiful beautiful hangers that they make here look at that one here that one spirals and we may run into more as we do the tour because i haven't seen the rest of the space yet but i asked him like where do you buy these he says they actually make them here they do sell the bonsai wires here in the garden supply store back there so i told him why don't you just make them and then sell them look at this how beautiful this is it just ties up here and then uh it goes all the way up there and then they even uh, prepared a hook down below here so you can hook more air plants below that or other plants how amazing is this so i told them that i told the owner here that if uh, some of the viewers here from europe the us wherever you are you want to do business you want to have these made here uh, and export it feel free to contact them i will have their I believe their Instagram up on this on the screen either now or earlier in the video but also in the video description I will have their contact information so feel free to contact them if you want to have some accessories made for your area look at these guys here grown in a clump so uh, if you guys don't know anything about Talensias let me talk about their life cycle a little bit Talensias they will always flower only once in their lifetime and it's going to be very beautiful, very showy flowers, such as that one there. I'm going to walk towards it. And then that's it. Uh, after they flower, look at how pretty this is. Uh, they will only flower for a little bit, for a little uh, few days. But then the spike may stay a little bit longer. In fact, sometimes they may dry up, so you may want to prune them off. After they flower, the main plant here will start putting up pups from underneath that is attached to the parent plant. Now, the owner here said that like, for example, in this case, they will form clumps. Uh, the parent plant may shoot out a few clumps uh, in batches. So up to two to three batches. And then finally it will die off. And then the, you can separate the clumps uh, individually. Like these guys, they were probably all separated. And some of them here are in fact clumps too. Let me see if I can pick this up. This is a clump. So you can separate them and that's how you propagate them. Or you can leave them as a clump like this if that fancies your liking but he also said that they have tried germinating the seeds and my gosh he said it took them like four years just to get them to a decent size so the fastest way to grow them to propagate them would still be to uh to propagate them by pups by the clumps so yeah look at how many varieties there are i'm overwhelmed by the beauty and the diversity of plants here, I believe this is the most common ones. Very, very inexpensive. Uh, I believe if you want to get started, go ahead and pick one of these guys up, but they are so beautiful. 
even though they're common and they're cheap. I really love these crisscross wire that they have here. And then they use a lot of the uh, tree parts. And this is an interesting way to display Tillandsias as well. Look at that. I mean, imagine if you filled the slots up with Tillandsias. Very nice. You could use recycled materials and just get super creative with them. And this is the best thing about Tillandsias. It's not just about their beauty, but how you can mount them, you can hang them. You can get super creative. Look at this one. You can get super creative with them. I've even seen people use them in, uh, for necklaces and nipple rings. <laughs> This one here is grown kind of like a wind chime. Very interesting. You could probably attach these to wind chimes. <laughs> and he did say that usually they would prune the dead leaves off the front. And because that happens, by the way, uh, all plants will shed old leaves. And you all, usually it's, it's a good idea to just take them off. So it's nicer looking. <laughs> but he hasn't taken them off because he didn't know I was coming, I guess. But the way that they would care for these plants is to water them once a week, like completely water them one, once a week here because the humidity is high and sometimes it, it rains here. But at home, we do have to uh, dunk them in water to let them soak, soak in the water for a few hours. And if, the care tip is actually in my Talansia care video in case you missed that out. And he actually never pro uh, fertilizes them. I'm quite surprised. I do fertilize mine now and then, look at this necklace here. You can turn necklaces into Talansias, by the way. Uh, I do fertilize mine sometimes, but he did say that there's a controversy around fertilizing them. I guess because here the, it's Bali, first of all, so the air is amazing and the water is groundwater, so it's probably full of nutrients. Um, but he said that when they do fertilize them, they tend to get a little bit more sick easily and they may get bacterial fungal spots which I guess is true with many health plants, especially if you, you over-fertilize them. And there are not really a lot of pest pressures with these because uh, they're not really that pest prone, except that grasshoppers apparently do love to feed on these and decimate them. So they do uh, very routinely, but without any schedule, they will mix fungicide, pesticide in water, and it just holds everything down with that so that that's one treatment that goes for pests and fungus because they can get fungus packed they can rot here in high humidity look at how beautiful this pink leaf uh, just like a dragon fruit this is a very wild looking one and then this one is also interesting look at this it looks like a magic wand like a beautiful magic wand oh my god i'm in Tillandsia heaven you guys and actually panda pupu she's She's the one that told me to come here. I have a, a video with her where I interview her and show her the collection. So make sure you don't miss that out. These are, I believe, medusas maybe. I think it's meant to be hung somehow. Very pretty. And this is quite nice too, the fact that they can be separated. They can be socially distanced from the other Talansias. Very pretty. Look at them. There's just rows and rows and rows of them. I have a feeling that the owner here is not in a big hurry to sell them too because they grow so slowly. Look at this one. This one is actually flowering. And he said that he's been collecting them yeah. since 2008. So I guess that is what? Uh, over 13 years, maybe? Oh, my math is not that good. <laughs> this is really, really cute right there. Look at the housing that it's in. Very pretty. So they're appreciated for the beauty, for the way that it's, it's displayed. You can absolutely have them indoors, but they do need some direct sunlight. Look at how bright it is now. They love, love, love bright light. If you put them anywhere in medium light, in low light, they will probably not make it. Oh, this is so pretty. I, I can't show you every single one of them. So I'm just going um, from one plant to another, trying to find out something unique about them. And just in case you think that they look like bromeliads, they are in the same family, in the bromeliaceae family. Although some of them can get really funky looking. Look at these ones. They look like uh, chicken claws. Very, very pretty. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Some of them can get rather big. And these guys, they do camp photosynthesis, which means that they photosynthesize uh, sorry, they do produce oxygen at night in case that's something that you're into, which is good for interior. This one's about to flower. I really love it. Look at that display. Oh my goodness. 
This is really, really making my day here. Look at that. And this one is flowering. This is the Zero Graphica. A lot of them are flowering right now somehow. And it's amazing because here in Bali, the people here have a better sense of composition and styling because they are growing in a, a culture where art is being appreciated. Look at that one. Art is being appreciated here. So for them, it's very effortless to display them very nicely. I don't know if I told you about that clump earlier. I have amnesia, but that is a whole clump of them. Look at all these babies. Look at all these babies. They're so cute. Very adorable. Now, I want to... Oh my gosh. Do, do I want to bring them home? Do I want to buy some here? I know I shouldn't because I am like traveling light and I'm observing all kinds of protocols with COVID when I'm traveling and my suitcase is fully packed so I cannot have these in my suitcase they wouldn't fit in but I do really want to buy everything <laughs> I want to buy everything and also, also I'm really broke <laughs> I spent all my money on my nursery and my new home uh, so I guess I'll be in for sure I'll be back here uh, in this in not only Bali but I'll be back at this nursery to get some Talantia I've been buying mine online and thankfully I've been receiving very very beautiful and healthy plants from online but sometimes they can be a little bit sad looking i've seen some really sad looking tilandia look at this pretty one here oh my gosh oh look at that very nice i hope the appreciation for them grow this is a little bit more grass like it's a little bit more green than the others very interesting let me see if i can pick one up carefully and this is actually grown in a clump. Oh, it looks really pretty. Look at that. I think that's trying to grow either a flower or a clump. But this is what it looks like. How beautiful is it? If, I just want to stick this on like a seashell or something. And let it hang there. So if you, you discover something decorative in your home and you want to put a air plant on it, <laughs> go for it. Because they make really good companions for interior decoration. But again, keep them next to a very, 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 very bright window. I cannot stress that enough. And as air plants, they don't really need to be in soil. I don't need to mention that. They do extract a little bit of nutrients and water from the soil, but then not much. This looks like the a hybrid of the uh, Spanish moss, don't it? Um, so the roots are only there to anchor them, uh, not really there for nutrients and water so don't put them in soil you guys and this is a really cool clump right here and that's where the mother died you see that main uh, trunk there in the middle and it's left behind some orphans <laughs> but i guess uh, another animal that does it is the octopus they do that the mother would sacrifice itself for the babies look at how pretty this clump is Just a little bit of pink I think this one's about to flower, that's why it's pink like this. Very, very nice. If one day I have a nursery or a botanical garden that is sizable, that's big enough, I definitely would love to have a section for these. And, uh, these guys are super nice. Oh my god, you guys. Oh my god, look at them. They're all mounted already. And they're ready to be shipped. Even though they don't really sell them online, they're not really aggressive enough. That's why I was a little bit frustrated when he told me that they don't have an uh, Instagram page for these. They don't really have a Tokopedia page. That's where I sell my plants and a lot of plant sellers sell their plants on Tokopedia. And I'm not being sponsored by them by any means, but they should. <laughs> um, this, so anyways, this shop should sell them online and on Tokopedia and on legit platforms. Because look at these. They are so pretty here. They look like they're ready to go, ready to be shipped and be in people's homes. Of course, if this was my nursery, look at that one. That one's grown very close together. If this was my nursery, I would be really sad if I had to let these plants go and have this uh, nursery be a little bit sparse. Because imagine if, if plants were leaving this place every day, the stock can go down really fast. And again, as I mentioned, these guys, they're not the fastest growers. Uh, I actually have this. And let me take this out slowly. And I have one that is um, a single plant. And for me to get a clump like this, it will take about 
uh, 18 months, I would say. 18 months up to maybe two years even. Look at that, the, the pup has pups too. That's how long it takes to grow them out. So, yeah, I really, really appreciate them, you guys. They're very, very good companions. Very dependable, again, once you can get the care right, the care is the same for all of them. Look at this rack here, so cute. They're a really easy, fuss-free plant. This is what the spent flower looked like. So it's probably recommended to just uh, nip it off. But yeah, look at some of them are impressive. Look at that. Oh my god. It's so cute. You just wanna, uh, I just want to grab it. <laughs> like that. <laughs> it's very, that looks very non-consensual. I'm so sorry. But they look good like this too. Like as like a de decoration by the window. Imagine if you have some uh, bells and wind chimes. That's nice too. You know, you can have this kind of. Uh, be swinging in the wind and then here as well imagine if you had like wind chimes hanging from under this thing and just look, look at the roots here they actually have a pretty robust root system as long as they find uh, something to grab onto they will grab on things on their own but look at how beautiful this is this is such a massive Let's put my hand there for comparison very very pretty and this is definitely weird look at all these babies uh, this is interesting. So they grew this on like wires, so it looks a little bit like uh, like a little bonsai tree. And this one, I'm gonna pick this up. This is very interesting. This right here. Oh my goodness! Look at how beautiful this is. Oh my god! This is like a beautiful work of art. I really recommend for you guys to give the Tillandsias a try. If you killed them before, don't give up. Try again. They don't need high humidity. They just cannot stay wet for, for too long. And they flower nicely. They grow slowly, so they make really good companion. They really teach us to be patient and to enjoy the little things in life, not to rush things. That's a cool little bonsai one here too. Oh my gosh, they must be really happy here. Look at the sun up there. So they have a shade cloth above us, but they're getting very, very bright light. They're getting very good care. And they have the Bali air here, which I'm sure is full of magic. So I'm heading down the last aisle here. We're almost done. Thank you for standing by with me in this Tillandsia heaven and this one's about to flower there's so many so many unusual shapes oh my goodness this is really pretty this is sitting on a wire rack and look at that one here this top growth is just so interesting so interesting look at the growth pattern on this this is becoming one of my favorites. Again, I don't know the species of all of these, but it is growing so beautifully. You are a beauty. And here is a lot of babies out here. It must be a joy to be here because every every time you're you know you're wandering here as an, as the owner as a worker, you'll see things just growing and growing and growing. And then when you're separating these so that they can live on their own, there's a sense of pride in here. Yeah, I feel very peaceful here. It's such a shame that I've got a million things to do and I've got to rush off. But yeah, look at this one rack here too. This is quite interesting. <laughs> it's like a carousel of them. And then there's some mounted over there. I love this spiral thing here. This can house so many Talensias. Imagine if you just bought one of these. You can literally fit one of each species here. <laughs> yeah, and this is the back of the space. That's a massive one over there. Um, yeah, I believe these ones are just probably ready to be treated. Let me see, are these a clump? No, they are, they're strung up together. That's what they are. <laughs> 
There's so many of them here. Look at the beautiful color on that one. I don't know. For me, like I'm, I'm really glad to have found this place. I hope that they can move some. They can sell some of these, so they can find really nice homes. And I'm feeling really grateful again for the owner to to talk to me and to share with me those care tips earlier. So I'm gonna bid you farewell. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you caught the rest of my Bali content because I do have some really interesting plant stuff here that we cannot find inland. I'm at Botanist on Instagram. If you wanna DM me on any questions regarding plant care and propagations, I'll try my best to get back to you. Meanwhile, do take care and stay safe. I will see you in the next video. Bye.